guys, I'm Evelyn. And I'm Robert. And we're talking about it. So the chapter we're going to be looking at is Journey to the Crossroads. Uh, last week we did the Forbidden Pool. Yeah. So what were your predictions at the end of the last episode to what we'll find today? So my predictions after reading this... Not great. So I'll start with my long-standing um, prediction for multiple chapters, which is until the ring is destroyed, Sam, Frodo, and Gollum are not going to be separated at any point. Okay. All right. But I also... Oh, sorry. I just... I read the chapter, guys, and knowing my predictions. <laughs> yeah. So my first prediction was that at some point they were going to cross paths with something like serious like some form of evil some bad guys are gonna like cross their paths um my second prediction was i hedged my bets a little bit and said that it was gonna be a metaphorical crossroad where they were gonna like argue about which way to go so i have a question for you before you do that okay in anything that you've read in these books so far do you think he would title a chapter after metaphorical? Yes. Absolutely. Show me where he did it. Just because he hasn't done it doesn't mean he won't do it. He uses so many metaphors in describing things and like blah, blah, blah and symbolism. What's a metaphor? I did science, not English. <laughs> <laughs> Okie dokie. Well, you're not giving an answer either. Anyway, so my third prediction. Uh, you wouldn't let me say that there was a squirrel, which I would have gotten wrong anyway. But <laughs> I uh, also said that Sam and Gollum were going to have a big blowout, like, fist fight. And? I'm, I'm like, I'm just totally... We'll, we'll at least see in the chapter, but, like, as soon as I read the chapter, I'm like, well, that happened. So, I want people to weigh in on this. Okay. I want people to weigh in whether or not it's a fair prediction to say something's not going to happen. So, I, I, I'm, and I'm, I'm just leaving it there. Y'all can... Well, because I feel like with Sam, Gollum, and Frodo, there's so many opportunities for them to get separated, so many opportunities for Gollum to just leave, because he does leave, but, like, only for, like, a few hours at a time, not, like, permanently separated. That's what I mean, is, like, permanent separation for okay. some reason, where, like, Sam gets captured, blah, 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 for, like, days kind of thing is what I mean. I don't mean, like, separated for, like, a few hours. I mean, like, long-term separation, like, marriage-failing separation. Like, it's that kind of thing. Okay. Thank yeah. you for explaining. Okay. Does that make you feel better? Not really, but go ahead. <sighs> okay. Weigh in and see if my prediction is valid, guys. It's not. Anyway, so, yes, this <laughs> chapter was Journey to the Crossroads. But before we get into this, I have a note that I want to talk about something else real fast. Okay. So, I don't know if y'all have seen it. It's a teaser, not a trailer. Oh, right. We were going to talk about this at the top of the, yeah. of the so, episode. So, Amazon Prime has put out their teaser for The Rings of Power. Yes. Which is going to be about the second age. Yeah. So I am really looking forward to this because it's something that's not looked at outside of literature circles or mm -hmm. really deep fandom. I did have a couple things I wanted to say about it. So my first thing I wanted to say about it is I know that a lot of people were thinking it was going to be like a Lord of the Rings, like show where they were just going to expand on what was already the cinematic masterpiece that was the trilogy um which a lot of people including myself were very concerned that they were going to add things that shouldn't be there like they did in the hobbit movie and invent things just for the drama oh, wouldn't you and want everything. to see frodo having a love affair no. I know. Anyway. <laughs> um, and so I'm really glad it's not that. And then also with the way that they've done the Wheel of Time, a lot of people were very concerned it was going to go very Game of Thronesy, where it was just going to be like very explicit kind of material just for the sake of explicit material. 
and like the Hobbit movies. Was there in the Hobbit movies? Honestly, it's been so long I can't remember. We'll get there when we get there. Um, it was one book. It should have been one movie. No, I mean like explicit, like X-rated stuff. Uh, well, is what They're I mean. They're not going to do that. Well, no, that's what I mean. Like, uh, Game so, of Thrones added in stuff just for the sake of it. And a lot of people, including myself, were concerned that they were going to do this to this. Well, but with you... but with what they've done with the Wheel of Time, I am very optimistic. Well, you also have to remember, they have permission from the estate to do this. And the estate is not going to let them do something like that. Whereas the writer of the Game of as whereas the writer of the Game of Thrones, he had that kind of crap throughout his book anyway, instead of an estate. True, but because an estate, they still added, they still took a lot of liberties with Game of Thrones that were not okay, that we're not going to get into because we're not that kind of podcast. But Wheel of Time, it's excellent, and so I'm very optimistic that this is going to be good. And that, and again, like it is through Tolkien's estate. And even though <sighs> there's beef with the Tolkien Society right now with the with the bands, like I'm still like pretty optimistic that it's going to be good. The official Tolkien Society. No, there's just other stuff in the fandom. I don't know if you're aware of the Tolkien Society. We're not going to get into it because we're again we're not that type of we're not a drama podcast. But well, yeah, the Tolkien Society is completely different. We we need to do a, a bonus episode about the stuff. I'll fill you in later. Okay, dokie. So this chapter, first of all, before I start, mm -hmm. so remember earlier on. I shared with you that Tolkien thought of himself as a hobbit. Yes, yeah. Okay, so what better way for a hobbit to start a chapter with? They went back to bed. And then they ate breakfast. And then they ate breakfast. <laughs> yeah. That it was, was a nice little treat for them. Yeah, but it's just, it's just so, it's just so hobbity. Mm-hmm. Is that a word? Hobbish? No, hobbitish? Which one? I think hobbitish. Write to us and tell us which one you like better. Anyway, so well, they um, have breakfast with um, Faramir, who has not slept, but he doesn't look like it. Right, yeah, he's not rested since the battle. Right, but he doesn't look wary, Correct. which yeah. to me really points out that he's been trained for leadership. He's been doing this for a long time. He knows his limits, um, but he hasn't reached them yet. He's being a fair leader, making sure that everyone else is rested before he rests. Right, and it's really interesting that Faramir has only known the hobbits for a short time, yet he wishes them well with perhaps a great understanding of hobbits. Mm-hmm. May no hunger trouble you on the road. I think he gets them real well. <laughs> yeah. Because yep. he, he has them put food in their packs. Yes. And, and make sure they're well provisioned. And and he does it in a smart way, too. We it, It's a little later in the chapter when they talk about the food that in their packs, but there's enough dried meat that will last them a long time, and they only pack them enough bread where it'll be good for them while it's fresh and not more than that that will get stale and gross. Right. Now they start talking about um, a place called I don't write it down. Which place? Now they also start talking about a place called Inlad Morgul mm -hmm. uh, which Valamir calls um, the Valley of the Living Dead. Right. Right. And warns them not to drink the water there. And, and try to stay out of it and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, but, like don't even go near right. it. But a direct translation from the languages that Token invented. <laughs> <laughs> is, Which one? Um, the inland is a flat, habitable bottom of a valley with sheer mountains on each side. I'm trying to think of what an equivalent would be in our modern world. Well, because we know he was influenced by so many things. I'm just trying to think. Well, well but I'm th I, I think I think of the Grand Canyon. 
Okay. I mean, I don't. I know that's not what he was thinking. Right. But I mean, the Grand T- Canyon. Some places it's like thousands of feet down. Yeah. And all and almost everywhere the um the sides are sheer. Mm-hmm. But there's a wide enough flat spot down there for people to live, which Native Americans did at one time. Yeah. And I guess maybe fjords. A little bit. Maybe if maybe what because we know that Slavic that. influences were had him. Yeah. But and then the other word, um, Morgul, he has it being translated as necromancy, which is death magic. Right. Black magic. Right. Blood magic. So Valley of the Living Dead is pretty good pretty description. Accurate. Yeah. Yeah. And they start heading toward, as they were start, as they start to head out, uh, they see uh, Moranon, and it's empty. They don't see anything there. Um, there's no sign of this having been where the final battle against Sauron was fought. Um, the word means dark gate or black gate and uh, Valamir says time draws near to some great conclusion so he's got that foresight yeah he he can definitely read the signs he knows what Frodo's mission is he knows the prophecy he he can definitely read the situation and what's happening and yeah so there's um also Faramir is educated compared to his brother Boromir. Right. He's more bookish. He's more Ravenclaw while Boromir was more Gryffindor. I disagree. That will have to be another discussion for another Well they're okay. Boromir is pure Gryffindor, where Faramir is Gryffindor with Ravenclaw tendencies then. Anyway. So he was um he was taught by Gandalf. Yes. Along with these packs full of food, provisions. Food. Uh they just let it wait and then we'll clap. He's scratching He's nesting. He still should be dra- scratching the couch. No, I agree, but it's hard to stop him. He only does this at night. So besides bones, stop it. Go to bed. Just sleep. So besides these packs of food that they gave the hobbits, uh, they're given staffs of polished wood with iron on the bottom tip. And this is not just a here, this might help you as a walking stick. It's like, this is a good walking stick. But it's also, there's a lot of symbolism in it. Uh, the, the wood that it's made out of, it, which is what is called the finger tree. Okay. Uh, there's a lot of significance to the tree as well. Uh, Vladimir will actually, much later in, much, much later in the books. I mean, we're all the way to somewhere in the middle of, um, where something is kept, something important is kept with uh, this Levitron. Levitron? That's not right. Anyway. I know, that's why. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, problem transforms right before your eyes. Anyway. Wood, you want to start that a little over? Besides the food that they put in his packs, uh, they had staffs of polished wood with iron on the bottom tip. Which is really good hiking sticks. Well, and we've got a nice little weapon, too, with the iron on the tip. Mm-hmm. And isn't iron also sim- like symbolic of, like... It's I- like, it's symbolic in Anglo-Saxon culture to, like, defend against... 
like evil and the fae and everything. Right, yeah. Right. Yeah, so that's yeah. significant too. Right. And it's been carved, carved heads. It doesn't tell us what it's carved with, mm -hmm. but the fact that they're being given something that was carved and highly polished means a lot of thought and work went into this. As a matter of fact, it might be something that belonged to somebody in the party that he acquired to be able to give to them. Right, and they, they modified it too to like work for their height. Right. Now, another significance about a staff with a carved head, it's a sign of authority. I mean, if you think about it. Okay. Um, especially in his books. So, um, Saramon has a staff that has an ornate top to it. Gondoth has a staff with an ornate top to it. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's, it's, these are all symbols of some type of authority. And by giving Frodo and Sam these, he's also saying, you have authority and you are acting under my authority. Okay. You know, that he's guaranteeing them his favor. Okay. And then, like I said, on top of that, it's a great tool. Yeah. Uh, you know, I don't know if they do it anymore, but I know when I was a Boy Scout back when the dinosaurs roamed the world, uh, you were always told that when you go out was to have a staff. Staff would be a weapon that could keep wild beasts away if you needed to. It would help you with being sure-footed. Uh, you can use it uh, to bind up somebody's broken bone. Uh, if you have two people with them, you can turn it into a litter if you need to. So there's a lot of, it's a lot of value mm. as well. So it's, okay. So, I mean, it really is one of the best things you could give. Is that why you have like 20? Uh, I don't have that many. I only have about 15. <laughs> <laughs> no, I have two. Um, so, like I said, so it's a great tool, got a great bit of value, and also being carved. It's a sign of beauty. Okay. Okay. So it's to remind them, I think, it's to remind them that there is still beauty in the world and there's virtue in finding and returning beauty. And that's something that's going to come up later, I think. Yeah. Much later, but yes, later. Then we get the episode when they're time to leave. And Faramir wants to blindfold Bella. Right. And... Frodo, he says it's like, Frodo and Sam, you've earned my trust. We don't have to blindfold you. Um, but Frodo kind of looks at Gollum and sees that Gollum's like clutching to him, really scared. And he still feels bad for the betrayal that he did in the last chapter. So he says, blindfold all three of us and blindfold me first so Gollum can see that there is no harm. Right. And this is reminiscent when they wanted to blindfold Gimli before he went into the Elven Woods. Right. And they all decided to be blindfolded as well. Right. To make it, you know, so it wasn't singling him out. Right. And then as soon as they leave these cavern and cave area, they, morning air hits them. Yes. So morning air, it's got that, you know, sweet smell of dew, there's some refreshing bits of it uh, from the stillness of night air because uh, it's getting warmer and the air is starting to move around some more. And if you've ever actually been really camping and you get out of your cabin or your tent, you feel this in the morning, very much so. Uh, you, you, it hits you in the face and there's nothing, nowhere else like it other than like out in nature, getting out there when it's still morning. You just stopped. I know, I was expecting you to carry, oh. carry on. <laughs> I had nothing to add to that. And then, do you have anything else? Not for that part. Okay, and this, this whole thing ends with Faramir saying, do not turn east. Mm -hmm. And then he gives them from what his tradition does is give them a farewell kiss on the forehead. Right. 
Um, there's something else very important that he says, though, when he's saying goodbye to them. He says that there is nothing that the scouts have seen. Like, suddenly there are no animals. There's, like, practically no wind. There is no sign of evil or good. There's just nothing. No. And it's very sudden. It's very weird. Even in the more evil parts, the, the parts that the scouts rarely go to because it's so risky, there's nothing. And that's that is very suspicious to me because I know that the timing of Frodo and Sam is corresponding to the timing with the rest of the party after they got separated. Um, is there anything in particular that's going on right now with the others that... I, I didn't even look. Okay. Because, and actually, what's really interesting is Tolkien actually mapped out a scheme. He... You can find his scheme. Okay. And you can say, like, okay, on March 1st of the second year, this happened in here, this is happening Well, I here. looked it up. This is It's March 8th through March 10th is when this chapter happens. And so I was too... Apparently, you can look up, like, what happened on each day. I just was very nervous, too, because I didn't want any spoilers, just in case it was, like, something further down the line. But um, I just, I was wondering if that might have correspond to, like, something going on with the other party where um, Sauron is distracted by those meddling kids. Would have got away with it. Well, it's about those meddling kids. Yep. Um, so then... Smeagol, you know, he's, um, you know, he bad mouths everybody. Mm-hmm. And, well, and then he's like, I joke, I joke. He's like, <laughs> and he's Sam like, gives him the side eye. He's like, I only joke, and I always forgive. <laughs> he's like, oh, yeah, let's tell another lie. And, but then it's funny because Gollum goes off, and Sam was worried about him not being there. Yeah. Sam is suspicious. Frodo is concerned, and Frodo has to remind Sam's like, "Remember the marshes? Yeah, like he's still of use to us. He's still good. I still see good in him. He's still helpful. Blah blah blah." Where <laughs> I- I'm, I'm about as trustful as Sam, honestly, with Gollum, but I see Frodo's side of it too. Right, and what's really interesting, you know. We've already said that they describe that there is nothing out there moving. Right. They don't see any evidence of anything out there moving. Uh, but as they get starting to walk, they find this these peaceful looking trees, these green open spots with wildflowers. Yes. Um, and, Which is unusual for this area. Right. And then they describe the mountains of Gondor as being crowned with a a fire freckled fame. No. Fire freckled flame. Right. And it was not the sunset or sunrise. Right. But then the other direction is pure darkness. Right. Which leads me to think it, it's like possibly some either some battle or preparation for a battle. Yeah. So now... And Tolkien describes this like an artist would have painted it. He appeals to our emotions. Uh, he appeals to our knowledge of what our senses have taken in. Um, it's an experience of perceiving a landscape. Um, however, we also see the darkness that the hobbits are expecting mm-hmm. to be, come over them sooner rather than later yeah because they know that even though they were told not to go to the east they kind of have to go south and east and they ask Gollum do they they ask Gollum does he know where they are Gollum says yes and we shouldn't be here (laughs) yeah yeah he's he's very like okay guys this isn't good uh, we need to uh, go in the dark. You need to hide in the day and uh, move it fast, folks. Right. <laughs> and like, and then I don't know if you have something before this, but then as they do this for like just a day, like right afterwards, Gollum suddenly goes, "Okay, guys, 
chop, chop, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. And Sam's like, I thought you said we weren't supposed to go in the daytime. And it's like tea time. And Gollum's like, bad things, bad things, let's go, let's go. Yep. <laughs> like very, like hurrying them on. Right. And it's like, if Gollum's scared, I'm scared. Well, and you know, Gollum is telling them that they can't use that road. Going towards the empty runes is an evil feeling in the air. And Frodo and Sam agree. Like, there's definitely something in the air that feels very heavy and just wrong. But when they do rest, they climb up into a home oak. Now, a home oak. oak. A home oak, uh, spelled H-O-L-M, is an evergreen oak. Okay. So it's all, so evergreen means what? It's always green. It doesn't share its leaves. Mm -hmm. uh, and then what's really interesting about that, it's considered an invasive species in the UK. Hmm. Okay. Uh, but it's also known as um, holly oak because it's got those holly type leaves where there's like little spikes on the ends. Okay. And so forth. And Gollum says, let us have a beautiful sleep <laughs> and let's yeah. go uh, so they move more and more into darkness uh, there's a broken land there's no real dawn until later in the day uh, they don't even really see stars in the dark sky and the moon has a sickly yellow glare so not good not and again, Gollum is rushing them to hide as light approaches. And they go into this maze, for lack of a better word, of brambles. Mm -hmm. And when I was reading this, you know what it reminded me of? Hmm. Bear rabbit. Okay. The bear rabbit kind of lives in the brambles, so the bear and the fox can't get to, can't them. Get to him. I mean, he even says, you know, when they capture him, he's like, Oh, please, please, don't throw me in the bars. Oh, yeah. And they do it. And so he gets away. Yeah. So those those um, briars are going to help. Those briars and those um, brambles mm -hmm. is going to help keep them safe because no one's even going to think about looking for something in there. Right. And, they, and then he gets splashed with water. And it gets splashed with water. <laughs> On Splash Mountain. <laughs> <laughs> so, they, Sam dreams while he's in there. Okay. What does he dream about? Oh, that's right. I almost forgot about that part. Uh, well, tell us. Um, well, I forgot it. <laughs> <laughs> so, so Sam dreams that he's back at Bag End. But the garden there is weedy and full of thorns. And then he's like, where's my pipe? Yeah. And that way, and he wakes up with that thought, where's my pipe? Oh, it's in my stuff. I know exactly where it is now, mm -hmm. but we don't have any pipe weed. Yeah. Uh, which he's dreaming of the comforts of home. Yeah. But he's also having a nightmarish dream that the gardens are all full of weeds and thorns and so forth mm. which which shows that evil is starting to branch out even into the shire into the shire right so they go to the crossroads and they come to the southward road uh the road running east is going towards miles mortar and the south it's going to Morano, Mor Moranon. Okay. <laughs> and, and, and at this point, um, they're not sure if they're hearing thunder or drums, but in either case, it's yikes. Yeah, it's it's very unsettling. Though they're finally at these crossroads, where it turns out it is a literal crossroads. Mm, it is a literal crossroads, but it's also a huge roundabout. Okay. 
So, I mean, it's, so it's not a crossroads for safe. It's like, you know, if you're traveling north and there's another big group traveling east, one of them is going to end up stopping the other. Okay. But by, ha- by, by it being a giant circle that even has a name, by it being a giant circle, it's just like when you drive in a roundabout. Mm-hmm. You know, I can enter here and I have to get off at the first exit. Or I can enter here and I can get off at the third exit. And so there's always movement around there. Nobody mm-hmm. has to stop for somebody to go through. Right. Okay. Which is, you know, very advantageous if you're marching to war and marching to watch and yeah and stuff like that but we have the thunder mm-hmm. um which shortly after that uh, we get the stereotypical i don't want to call it an argument stereotypical stern conversation between photo and sam about gone missing again right well i so, it makes you wonder what's going to happen later on. Yeah. Because Tolkien keeps reminding us through different ways that Sam doesn't trust him and Frodo is like, I don't trust him, but I don't think he'll do us harm. Right. 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 Now, do you have anything up to here? Because I got, I'm going to go down a rabbit hole in a second. No, I'm good right now. All right. S- Sam pulls up a gaffer quote. Okay. I am starting to think that there's no, not going, I'm starting to think that if there's not going to be a song or a poem, there has to be a gaffer quote. Hmm, that'd be interesting to look back on. Um, and so, the quote is, where there is life, there is hope and need of vittles. Vittles, yeah. They're in need of vittles. Okay. When I hear the word vittles, what's the first thing I think of? The Beverly Hillbillies. That's, okay, that's, I knew I recognized it, I just couldn't remember where. Right. So, I had to go down the rabbit hole and do a little bit of looking about Tolkien using vittles and Beverly Hillbillies calling them vittles. How the heck did that happen? Mm-hmm. Uh, so here in the United States, uh, in the rural south of USA, and the history of cowboys and pioneers and mountain men talk of food as vittles. Mm-hmm. Okay? Uh, my family might call them vittles, but it's more like a we're more like jumping around or something. Mm-hmm. Um, but the word actually comes from Middle English via the French English via from Latin. <laughs> <laughs> and it's, I'm going to spell it because I'm not going to try to pronounce a Latin word. B I C T U A L I A. Victorlon. And it means two different things. It can either mean I like, or with a different inflection, it means nutrition. Okay. So, so we got this word like vittles, mm-hmm. which comes from Latin, technically a dead language. Mm-hmm. And to me, this is just another wonderful way of token adding in stuff that he has as general knowledge mm-hmm. because of who he is and what he studies. Right. Where to Tolkien, like, this would be like, yeah, this is totally normal. Versus other people are like, what? <laughs> uh-huh. But I'm sure their vittles isn't the same as Granny's vittles. Which include, right. Which included um, roadkill possum stew. <laughs> yeah. And stuff like that. <laughs> And, yeah. And so while they're there thinking about food, maybe snacking a little bit on stuff, Gollum shows back up and says, We gotta go, gotta go, gotta go. Yeah. And both Frodo and Sam say something. He's like, Don't be silly. We need to get going. Yeah. And Sam, as usual, is suspicious. Mm hmm. As am I. As are you. 
what is described as a black wall of vast size. Yeah. And, and we don't really get a better description of it other than other than Frodo thinking about, you know, it's so big and massive. It's like the sky, and I almost expect to see lightning go across it. Right. But it's just very, very tall trees from men of ages past. Right. And they finally get to these crossroads. And Gollum tells them that we need to go this way. Uh, so they're going east to come to the southbound road. And that's what it's called. Is the southbound, southbound road. road. Yeah. Everything else has a elvish name or a dwarfish name or something that he's pulled out of Old English or pulled out of Latin. Nope. Southbound Road. Yeah. Which makes me think that because he's calling it something simple, he wants us to remember it. Mm, okay. This is the first time I thought of that. So I'll, we'll, find, we'll find out as we continue to read. To read it to read for it. me for the first time and you for like the millionth time yeah. to see if that's correct or not. Right. And so I was talking about, you know, the crossroads being more like a, like a roundabout. Mm -hmm. He even describes it as a great roofless ring. Yeah. You know, and so Middle Earth invented the roundabout. <laughs> However you feel about that, you can feel about that. <laughs> Definitely feel some sort of way. If everybody learned how to drive in a roundabout, we wouldn't have problems. Yeah. Oh, uh, whole time. Well, I was waiting for the crossroads part because I have a lot to say about that part. Okay, well, go ahead. Go. Okay. Crossroads. All right, so finally they get to the literal crossroads um, of at least where they need to be. And we see that there are ruins of, like, old kings and heroes past. Then they've been completely defiled by what we assume are orcs. Well, and time. And time. But it's very more recent, like, stuff has been, like, there's a head knocked over. And then there's, like, kind of like a graffiti-ish on another one. And there's this really great artwork that kind of shows it. Um, but there, um, they're kind of, it's very ominous and it's very. It's very, very. It's very, very. Uh, <laughs> but also, it's, I... it's, it's not a great sight until you see the head. But the head, at first what you see is that someone has painted a big red eye on the forehead. Right. But, go ahead, talk about what else but is there. On another head, wildflowers and like moss and grass and stuff has like kind of grown around it to make sort of like a crown. Yeah. And Frodo just exclaims, he's like, look, um, the king has been crowned again. And it really brings a, a thing of hope to Frodo and to Sam a little bit as well, where it's like, even in these dark places, in these dark times, life can grow and still have some beauty. And that that whole, like, kind of Christian ideology of while there's darkness, there's always some light. Yeah, and um, he also makes sure he mentions that the eyes are hollow. Yeah. Now, because... I started playing Dungeons and Dragons back with the first <laughs> version of Advanced Dungeons and Dragons. Mm -hmm. One of the artwork in one of the books is a thief pulling out these giant jewels out of a big head. Okay. So I can't help but wonder if these eyes are hollow because there was something significant that hmm. has been pulled out or not. Okay. Pulled. Because it doesn't seem like anything like that is built just just for beauty. Right. Uh, so it, it, make, it just makes me wonder you know, yeah. more about what was going on there. Okay. 
And, be, and before we get to the end of that chapter, you got anything else you want to no. add that we missed? Well, more along the lines of this chapter as a whole. It was a very short chapter. It's probably one of the shortest chapters like that we've read so far. And, and chop four. And chop full of information. You need to do that again because it didn't register. And chock full of information. Right. Um, and while I can't help but to think that it's like this could have easily been like paired with like the last chapter or possibly the next chapter, I feel like the chapter itself as a feel works with the title Journey to the Crossroads, where this is a transitional kind of chapter that I kind of get why it would stand alone because like you said it's chock full of information and the importance of what they see um is i think is significant enough to stand on its own so the chapter basically ends with the sun sinking you get some stars and then all of a sudden it's like a black curtain falls everything the night becomes black yeah I mean, you don't even get a regular dusk. You don't even get a regular starry sky coming at it. Mm -hmm. uh, and we know from the previous night that the moon, they won't see the moon until not long before sunrise. Yeah. Which sunrise actually seems like. Yeah. So, you got anything else? No, I think that's it. Yeah, I think I got everything too. Uh, um, so... Our next chapter, our next chapter is The Stairs of Sirith Ungul. What do you think? I what? think someone's going to fall down some stairs, honestly. Can I make that prediction? Someone's yep. going to fall down some stairs? Okay. All right, so that's one. Can I make my other prediction? They're going to climb some stairs. <laughs> By that look, I'm going to guess no. Um. Oh my gosh, I I really I feel like it's just very straightforward. They're gonna climb. Can I say it's very straightforward? They're just gonna climb some stairs, and some stuff is just gonna happen. Like the entire action is gonna like happen on these stairs. Like that's where the entire chapter is gonna take place is on these stairs. Is is that good enough? Okay. You Since need one more. Okay. Well, I just, I, I, I feel like I need to explain that one real fast. Like, basically, as well as procrastinating so I can think of another one. Um, but you just told me that, um, or at the beginning of this episode, that he's very literal with his meaning. So I'm going with the literal. Um, but I still need a third. Um... See a squirrel. No. Um... <sighs> Okay, can I say that... Is somebody going to fall off or get pushed off? Ooh. I'm just going to keep with falling down some stairs for now, whether it's one or the other. But for... <laughs> I'm sorry, I just got the vision on my mind of the old Eddie Murphy. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yes. Grandma coming down the stairs, help, I'm falling. Do, 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 do. Um, I'm still falling. Do, 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 do. Okay, go ahead. But no, um, my third one is... Okay, uh, let me know if I can get away with this. I think Sam is going to threaten Gollum. Okay. Like, not that they're going to get into, like, a big fight like I thought last time, but I think Sam is going to threaten Gollum because of his suspicions. Okay. Okay, cool. I think we got it. All right. Well, we got through that chapter somehow i love how when you look at the timing wise even with editing i think this chap this episode is actually going to end up being longer than the last one because we just had a lot to say about it yeah but we had a lot of redos too so anyway i've been robert and i'm evelyn and you've been listening to talking about it